marksmen are at 8 and the sherdils are at 3. One last game to go in second semi-finals. Keep watching you Cypher Nair Sport Night Superstars. Coming up next. Turn to ban. Ten seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to You Cipher Season One. Band. We're drawing closer and closer towards the end. Sherdils versus the Marksmen. The Sherdils did lose their game of Counter-Strike. The Marksmen pulling through. And a lot rests on this game. Are we looking at a tiebreaker? Or are we looking at either one of these teams going through? My name is Vivek. With me is CloudX. And, uh, well, pretty standard stuff as far as the meta has developed in 7.07D in the U Cypher League. Tide Hunter getting banned out. Medusa getting Radiant banned out as well. Almost every team bans out the Panda as well as the Doom versus uh, Shadows. I'm not really sure why the Doom, but Khans is known to play the Panda a fair bit. So, Marksman opt to pick up the Omni-Nair as their first pick. Shadows opens up with the Disruptor. Um, I don't think we've seen Marksman opening with an omni Knight so far. No. It's, it's a first for them. Yeah. But what they seem to have forgotten is that the Ancient Apparition is still in the pool. So that's a possible pickup here for Shadils. But they've opened with the Disruptor as their 5. I don't know if they have room for the AA anymore. You probably go in with the hero like the Earth Spirit, which brings a little bit of lockdown and silence, some sort of disruptive presence in those team fights. Shadils. Earth Spirit? Yeah. Huh. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if we've seen Disruption. No, play not the that Earth I can Spirit. remember. I remember Opa playing the Disruptor a fair bit, but I do not seem to remember Shadils ever picking up the Earth Spirit. Right, one minute, 50 seconds on the clock here. Let's see what they're going to go with. They do have the option to reveal their hand in terms of cores as well. I mean, there are a few potent cores, like the Spectre still in the mix. Yeah, Spectre is still in the pool. That said, though, many do consider the Omni Knight to be a counter to the Spectre of sorts, especially once you get your Aghanim Scepter online, which may or may not happen, depending on whether this is a three or a four position Omni Knight. Um, if there was a hero that you'd want to deal with that Spectre, the Omni Knight is one of them. Um, they're going to go with the Sand King though, Sherdils, not revealing whether this is going to be a 4 or a 3 position Sand King. But Marksmen are in the clear now. They can move into the next phase of bans and ban out the Ancient Apparition to provide their Omni Knight with much needed room to heal up in these fights. They'll supplement that Omni Knight pick with the Shadow Demon. It's a fair bit of control. It's a possible setup for a Shadow Demon Luna pick up as well. But the bans are upon us and instantly we'll see Sherdils get rid of the Luna. Yeah. Terrorblade is in the mix though. And yeah. Terrorblade with a Repel and multiple versions of him courtesy the Shadow Demon could be an extremely scary lineup to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of heroes uh, that do um, have synergy with the Shadow Demon. Terrorblade being one of them, Luna. Uh, Five you seconds could do remaining. Drow, not the best, but it's still push. Uh, if this is indeed a push coming up from the Marksman, we are more likely to see heroes such as the Ancient Apparition getting banned. You spoke of how, uh, well, right now on the Shadow's draft, there isn't space for an Ancient Apparition. But when you desperately need that hero, you can pretty much run him in any lane. I've seen Navi even run Ancient Apparition in the mid lane. EG's done it in the past. And... Um, if, if they want to, if they have to, they can still make space for the Ancient Apparition. You know what I'd really like to see here, though? I'd love to see Marksman running the Undying alongside that Omni Knight. Dyer's then you run an offensive now. dual lane with the Omni Knight and the Undying. Of course, you do have to ban out the Ancient Apparition in that scenario. And then you can run Shadow Demon plus one on the safe lane. Yes. Those are two dual lanes that are going to be able to hold their, hold their own. Shadow Demon <coughs> with the early Shadow Poison, Omni Knight and Undying with the absurd amounts of tankiness and heals. And just one point in the Degen Aura alongside the slow coming out from those zombies courtesy the Tombstone would be absolutely Five impossible for a Sand King and a Disruptor to deal with. Yeah. Uh, so far, the bans coming out from the Marksmen, they Radiant largely seem to be targeted to at Khans. They've also taken note of how Opa likes to run uh, the Winter Vive in a fair bit. 
unfortunately opa he's got his other secondary uh, support that he's done a lot in this tournament and that's the disruptor so he's going to be playing the disruptor another off lane ban coming up from the marksman they're seconds. removing the timber saw anything that allows khans to be a force has been taken out of the Five equation now i've remaining. been watching the shadows in other tournaments uh, a slightly different iteration of the same players and they've been the ones who push early mm -hmm. they've actually run draw and ta and they've had a lot of success with it i'm curious to see if the shadows will be going for anything of that sort in this game there's still room for a beast master khans plays the beast master he plays the darks here i mean you banned out a lot of the off lane pool but there's still a lot left for him to play We know that Mama Sita also likes to run the Mirana at mid ever so often. Mm -hmm. This may be one of those games where he goes with it again. Um, unfortunately, even though the Mirana does love to go for the Diffusal Blade, that's no longer a way to deal with the Repel on the Omni Knight. Yeah. And I think the nerf to the yeah, Diffusal has actually... Yeah, it doesn't even Guardian Angel. Yeah, it's actually served as a pseudo buff to the Omni Knight. Yeah. Which kind of justifies why Marksman at first picked it. Yeah. Okay, it's uh, going to be an underlord uh, coming out from Shadows. We did not see this coming. I believe it's the first underlord pick of the tournament as well. Mm, yeah, did, did we see a game of underlord? I'm not sure, but um, this I mean they, they've focused so heavily on banning out Khans as heroes, but they've forgotten that there are a whole lot of offlaners Five that are still remaining. very much in the meta, and underlord is one of them. To some extent, I feel these vans coming out from the marksmen are slightly wasted because if they do have something in mind with this Omni Knight and Shadow Demon, they would be a whole lot wiser if they spend those vans trying to secure It's their also, draft. Also, there's also the fact that marksmen don't have a tri lane to deal with the Underlord anymore. I mean, the Shadow Demon and the Omni Knight are really not the best heroes to deal with them. They're going to go with the Slara, so it's going to be a Shadow Demon and a Slara going up against the Underlord. Okay. I'm a little more convinced by that. I think they've got a fair bit of firepower, especially with the Shadow Poison stacks and possibly the Soul Assumption catching on top of Mizra. Well. Yep. And yeah, there's all, there's the obvious synergy between the Five SD and the Slara, remaining. right? Disruption into the Crush, pretty much a guaranteed Crush on whoever you jump upon. The only issue is I don't think either the Slara or the Shadow Demon are going to be able to trade hits with the Underlord. Yeah, but there's still space for something like uh, uh, the Ursa or the Life Stealer on the lineup of the Marksman. Both do Ursa, Life Stealer, Monkey King. All Monkey three King. really good picks here for Marksman, especially given there's a there's a repel waiting for them in the late game stage as well, which means that the BKB may be an optional item for their cores. Mm -hmm. Pox gonna be the pick from Shared Dills. That's gonna be their fourth and possibly their middle lane pickup. Marksmen are going to need a little more lockdown to deal with that, or they could just go all in with the armor reduction and pick up a Templar Assassin for themselves at mid. Five seconds remaining. I mean, Tade decimates the puck in a one-on-one -on -one situation and has a fair bit of synergy with the Slaughter as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe a Tade and a Draw Ranger this game for Marksmen wouldn't be half bad. Yeah, but, but they're going to go with the Dragon Knight instead. I think Dragon Knight is going to do okay in the mid lane. Yeah, but I still feel like Puck has the upper hand. Yeah, Puck definitely has the upper hand. We should see the Puck come out on top in terms of CS in that mid lane battle. <laughs> Just as the Dragon Knight is going to be fine. Uh, so far, if you look at the Shadows and the lineup, they've got strong team fight. Uh, they can fight often, and uh, with the Pit of Malice, the Sand King, the Puck, the Disruptor, a certain ease of execution in the lineup. We're seeing an anti mage get banned out from the Marksman. They already have issues in terms of lockdown. And I'm going to ban out the anti mage. Shedels would do good to pick up a Viva on the safe lane. What do you think? I mean, Shedels know that the push is coming. Maybe you want to pick up your safe laner that has some sort of wave clear or something that comes online really early on in the game. Marksmen, I mean, they've no, they've spared no expenses, right? They've shown their Dragon Knight, they've shown <coughs> their possible illusion push with the Shadow Demon, and they've shown the repel that's going to be upon the Dragon Knight as well. If anything, there's an extreme amount of priority going to be sent over towards the Slara to get his Blink Dagger early this game, because at the moment he's the only source of initiation for the Marksmen. Yep. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Shirdles wouldn't do badly to even pick up something as bold as a safe lane tinker this game. Okay. Because they've got an absurd amount of magic damage coming out. Repel's only going to protect one target, and with the control that a tinker brings, you know that your high ground is going to be defended for the early to mid game stages. I But mean, that puts you on a clock. That puts you on a clock, and then you're not great at taking high ground yourself. Uh, I I think there will be wave clear with the puck, with the underlord, a whale on top. They've got enough in terms of wave clear. I think they need to pick something that kind of. Sort of secures the late game if this does go late. 
Marksman though, I think the Juggernaut would be a good choice here for them. Radiant's you've got the magic great. damage versus the Underlord early on and you've got the healing ward to sustain your push. Okay, they're going the Lifestealer. I can get behind that. Completely okay. get behind that. Like you said, Lifestealer is one of the better ways to deal with the Underlord and they infest bombs a decent amount of setup versus Shared Dills, but Shared Dills immediately responds with the Razor. That plugs up a lot of holes that their lineup had right now. For starters, they've got a way to deal with the buildings. Uh, for seconds, they've got a way to deal with the life sealer. You can no longer, well, you can never really break the static link with uh, your rage. Yeah. I think this is a good draft coming so out. It's a hard Shadows. lane for the Omni Knight. You bet it is. I mean, we also talked about how Shadels are going to need a carry that comes online early on to deal with the push. They've got the Razor who comes online as early as early can get. Hmm. It's a very half-assed push coming out from the Marksman, that Shadow Demon, I'm not really sure if he's the ideal um, five position. Yeah, I agree, he feels like a bit of a misfit here. I, I, I mean, if the intention was to push, there were two other fives that could have done well. Pagna, although he's not been run like a five a lot, Yakshas have done it once. And the Shadow Shaman Shadow comes Shaman. to mind, yeah? Yeah, I agree, I, I'm not sold by this uh, Shadow Demon pick either, but... Yeah, it's, it's like they started doing a Shadow Demon draft and then midway they lost focus. Even if they wanted to continue with a Shadow Demon draft, the Terrorblade wasn't banned. They could have picked him as their last yeah. pick. But they won the Infest Bomb at the same time. So, they're a little bit here, a little bit there. Alright, based solely on drafts, your prediction, Vivek? Shadows. I gotta agree with you. I think Shadows has the better draft here. As always, we're going to have a pause immediately after the draft ends. And this time, it doesn't look like there are technical issues. They're going to pause. I'm having a technical discuss. issue. I've got to restart my data. Yeah, this happens to you every single time, man. I don't know. It's almost as if they pause waiting that I have to restart my data. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, while you jump back in, I'm going to do a quick introduction of both sides. On the side of Sherdils, you've got Puck handling, or rather Mamasita handling that Puck. Sand King's going to be in the hands of Disruption. Rival is going to be playing that Razor. Disruptor is going to be handled by Opa and that will put Underlord in the hands of Khans. Meanwhile, on the other side, Marksman, they're going to be running Itachi God on the Slada. He's got Life Sealer played by Mage. Pasha is going to be playing the Shadow Demon. Dragon Knight is going to be in the hands of Zark and that means Red will be playing the Omni Knight. Mm -hmm. Lyle one Smoke, uh, just to get the rune which is already yours. Maybe some vision along the way. Yeah, rather unnecessary move coming out here from both sides actually. No smokes being popped by Sheridan, so they're going to be a little more economical about the way they start this Yeah, game. and they've got a smoke on Opa. They've learned. I mean, they've done their homework and they've learned that yeah. this smoke is needless. Now, unless you... So, usually this smoke, how it ends up working out is that one of the four positions, or rather both four positions are looking to make their way towards the mid lane. You can see Itachi God is already up. He's uh, prepping to just be a nuisance in the mid lane. Uh, the Sand King not doing um, anything of that nature just yet. No wards being planted just yet in the mid lane. You uh, cut the, the well. It's now become standard. The standard off lane ward for the marksman. While Shadows are still holding on to their ward. Opa is only planting it just now, and uh, this doesn't block the camp, but it does give a fair amount of vision. They did drop a ward on the side though, next to the tier 1 tower this, on the Radiant plant. I'm not a fan of this ward. I'm not I'm really against it to be honest. Because Zark's going to need to watch for ganks coming in. I don't think he really cares if Mamasita has the high ground because he's right. a melee hero. But right? it's so single target. You're looking at ganks coming only from this part. You don't need the high ground ward like you mentioned, but you're not looking at a rune either. Yeah. But it's unlikely that this ward is going to get dewarded. Rival actually started That's with a full magic wand by the way. So. Interesting. That is... Is he expecting an offensive try? Is he expecting to go up versus the Shadow Poison? Uh, the then, Shadow Demon? Even then, I don't know if you buy the entire magic wand. Maybe you just pick I up the magic stick and go to lane with a few more supportive items. I mean, Razor's got some piss-poor base damage. Yeah, 48. Zark, though. At the middle lane, he's going to be taking a fair bit of a beating here from Mamasita, who chose to start with the phase shift. Not hmm. a fan. I think uh, he should have gone for the illusory op push. Opa, though, I think he's goofed up. He's been cornered by Mage, who's put a point into open wounds. Here comes disruption, gets disrupted, 
and now they're waiting for round two. Disruption holding on to skill point. He's actually put it into the Butter Strike, lands a nice two man Butter Strike. Rival comes here with the static link, nothing to cancel the TP. Pashu's out of there. First blood to the marksman. And uh, primarily because Opa was woefully out of position, but I think. Uh, rivals and especially Shevels. Disruption. Whipping on a Burrow Strike there. Yeah, just not sure what that was about. But I'm pretty sure Shevels just wanted to run an aggressive try. They wanted the Razor up against the Shadow Demon. I'm not entirely sure why. They could also spend their time trying to shut down the Omni Knight. Look at Red though. He is yeah, bullying he just... the hell out of Khans in this bottom lane. That Orb of Venom has worked wonderfully versus that Underlord. Yeah. But I. I... I think this lane could start tilting back in Khans' favour once he has a point in the Atrophy order. Yeah, there he's got it now. Yeah, so he's going to get that insane uh, additional damage every time a creep uh, dies in the vicinity. Top lane, they're going in upon mid, so Static Link is there. Lifesteal losing damage. Not losing HP though, Rival trying to run him down. It's just a level 1 Static Link, Itachi God. Just ensuring that no one passes. I mean, Rival possibly should have considered starting with the Windlace or even the Boots of Speed this game. Yeah. Now, Winlace would have helped, but he wanted the completed okay. wand. I can understand the stick if you're very clear that you're running a tri lane, but the complete wand, not a believer. Yeah, well, Zark in the middle lane is getting some decent farm as well, by the way. He's sitting with uh, two points in the Dragon Blood now. Yeah. So the auto attacks won't, hurt, won't really hurt as much, especially since he's even got a Stout Shield along with. But Disruption is in the vicinity. He's got the Burrow Strike now. He's going to go in for the hit first, perhaps. Burrow Strike to start with. They've got the Illusory Orb, but. Zark's just too tanky at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, without the extra magic damage coming out from the Caustic Finale, I think that kill is pretty much impossible. Dire Courier has been killed though. At the mid lane itself, Mama Sita takes it down. Yeah, good stuff coming out from Up that top. top lane. Opa dropping low, Razor trying his best, but Itachi Gods gets in, gets the last hit. Can Rival find a kill in response? He's got the boots, he's got stick charges and 56 stolen damage. Mage just getting into the trees and getting the hell away from there. In fact, they might be considering going in on Rival again, but he's got the stolen damage for now, so they've got to be a bit more careful. So Mage. one of my bigger problems, uh, I mean, nothing personal here, but Opa as a 5 hasn't had too much impact with his ultimates. I remember seeing uh, that beautiful game coming out from the Shedils versus Akramax. If you remember where they approached high ground in this fashion that few teams in India have, and Khans was just spectacular on the docks here, but Opa never got a single static storm off in that entire game. Let's hope he has some luck this time around. Well, he's got all the setup he needs for a static he storm. He really does. This is a you game can't where ask for more. the disruptor should shine. But uh, they're going to have a bit of a harder time here because they tried to de ward on the lane, but. Little do they know that the Observer is right to the left side of the lane here, on the top side. Yeah, smart ward coming out. That means that Pashu and the boys can still make offensive yet defensive plays without risking too much. Mm -hmm. Rival, he is quite susceptible to going down here. I mean, he doesn't have a point in the unstable current. <coughs> the open wounds will allow Mage to still get in close without taking any damage himself. Meanwhile, at mid, looks like Zark's in trouble. They've got the point, well, no point in Caustic just yet. Mamacita can't jump up to that illusory orb either. Zark, that regen's gonna start kicking in once more, and he's even been pulled a tango for good measure. Yep. It's gonna be harder and harder to bring down this Dragon Knight. Uh, Disruption's been trying his best. Uh, the offensive try lane, it sort of worked out. It's primarily worked out because Rival's got a lot more CS than the Lifestealer. Mage is just struggling to approach the lane because every time he walks in, he loses damage courtesy the static link. Opa does have the glimpse. Now they're. Force out the rate from the life stealer. Rival he running in here. with the static link. Disruption gets the burrow strike, the rage. Well, excuse me, the glimpse into the kinetic field. He's caught in it for a moment. He's trying to bring down Opa and he's going to be brought down. That's the death on the one position. Well done by the Shadows. Well done by Disruption, who's actually searching for more. Not so well done by Pashu, by the way. He should have used the defensive disruption on the life sealer to dodge the glimpse, but instead he uses it offensively and Mage oh, gets Oh, they're going back. in. The crush, crush. on to two. Mage pops the raid, moves on to rival. Rival's not got any stolen damage, has a couple of stick charges, turns down, brings down Itachi God and moves on to the life stealer. Disruption, not sure it was the best. Mage still looking for the kill. Now he's losing damage. Disruption has mana for the Butter Strike. Who are they going upon? And it's going to be the Shadow Demon. With that plasma field, Rival scores a double. Share deals. Really dominating this top lane hard, but at the middle lane, what? Dragon Knight just solo killed the puck, how does that even happen? 
I think range form plus dragon tail. I don't think he should have died there though. I mean, Puck's pretty mobile. He's, he had the uh, advantage in the laning stage at least. Yeah. Ended up throwing it Look away. Look at this mage. He's trying to farm, farm the small camp here. Disruption's caught him. He has got the rage. He hasn't got a TP. Pops a couple of stick charges. Crawls towards the shrine. Pops it. Hopes to stay alive. But they pushed him out of the lane. They pushed him out of his own jungle. Where does his lifestealer go? With just seven CS to his name. Meanwhile, Khans has pretty much been walked all over but in the bottom lane. Red is at level 6, he's managed to get himself a decent 24 CS. That's almost as much as the puck has gotten. But more importantly, he's got 14 denies versus the Underlord. Underlord's at level 5. Omni Knight is Khans close is to moving level in. 7. Now. He hasn't got the Pit of Malice, Firestorm, but the Battle Strike wasn't there. There's the Battle Strike, he's not going to take too much damage from the Firestorm. They've got the Waning Rift, Zark could get a kill, but his range form wears off. Purification on to do, Crush on to do as well. And the Soul Assumption upon Disruption forces him to Battle Strike in defense. Khan surrounded, the Breathe Fire didn't get the kill, but they do manage to bring down the Underlord Red with the timely rotation there. That was Mamasita dying, coming back to the lane, expending Dream Coil and now having to make a trip back to the Shrine. Lots of wasted time on this park. He's at level 6, while Dragon Knight's crossed level 7 as well. Slowly but surely, the tides are turning back in favour of the Marksman, while Sherdils. The only thing they've got going for them is that Rival is free farming on the top lane, and he's now up with the Phase Boots as well as the Ring of Aquila. Dyer's top tower is yeah. under attack. I... I don't know. I'm wondering what Marksman can do to try and get this Lifestealer better start. They switch lanes, which is one thing that might work. They pretty much need to babysit the Lifestealer. And uh, I hope the Marksman have taken note of this, that the Lifestealer doesn't even have boots at the moment. This is when you want to try and force objectives. When you know that for all intents and purposes, the Marksmen are playing one player shot. Instead, they're going to move towards the bottom lane. Disruption onto Khans. He drops the Pit of Malice, tries what to make a run for it and can get away from Itachi God. The TPs are coming in. Opa, two levels in Glimpse. Itachi but has... God practically walked into the Pit of Malice, but I don't think it would have caught him anyway. What's also interesting is that Red is just saving his money. He's not spent anything as of now. He's got 1600 gold in the bank. I'm assuming he's going for the Midas, which is why he's saving up the money for the recipe. Okay. But uh, as of now, Sherdils are prepping a defense on the bottom lane while Mage will just rotate back up to the top lane to try and keep farming. Yeah. Razor's in the vicinity, never mind. Razor's actually TP down as well. Yeah, Razor did TP down. Zark, he's going to uh, use this time to get some damage done on that tier 1 with the Elder Dragon form. However, disruptions here, and so too is Mama Sita. They need the Veil of Discord on the puck if they're looking for the skill. Pashu and Nitachi God are nearby. Disruption, he's shown himself. I'm not sure this call is going to be enough. Zark actually turns around. The orb and wow, the waning rift does a lot of damage. But the Pashu. crush is there on Mama Sita. A breathe fire onto the Sand King while Mama Sita finally ends up going down after taking the Dragon Knight with him. What? Pashu. What was Pashu doing, man? I mean, that was the most obvious reason to defensively disrupt your Dragon Knight. He chose to go offensive instead. I don't know, man. That, I mean, I'm pretty certain the Dragonite would have survived that and they would have still gotten a kill there. Mage now has a better lane. Um, he's doing fine against uh, the Underlord. He, well, he's asserting lane dominance as he rightly should versus but an Underlord. But Khans could be in trouble again because you've got Slada wrapping in from behind. He's got the sprint activated but doesn't quite commit because the creep wave is too far pushed out for Mage to join him. Mama Sita. Back to the lane after his death, he's still falling further and further behind in terms of net worth. While Zark, he's got the armlet queued up next. Dyer's bottom tower won't last long. Red, he What's chose to go for the arcane Dyer's boots after all, so it's not the Midas coming out from him. Despite him holding on to a fair bit of money. I mean, Oof. I get that the game plan here was to end early from Marksman, but... I just don't see how they group up into a face of, into the face of that Razor and Underlord. I mean, grouping up is not an option because of how bad a start the Lifestealer's had. He's going to be asking for time to catch up, while the Dragon Knight might want to try and push early. Mage, uh, still no boots. He's only got Gloves of Haste as well as a Blightstone on that Lifestealer. I think he's going for the catch-up Midas this game. Huh, yeah, that... Could be a possibility. He's gonna die though, yeah, if he's not careful. Razor's here as well. Battle strike will start things Butter off. Strike, the Pit of Malice. They're stealing damage. He pops the rage and runs away. Now Pashu's TP in. No defensive disruption Again. means that the life stealer will fall. Pashu slow with the fingers and the life stealer pays for it. Disruption 
does get a butter strike, uses the sandstorm. Khan draws aggro, but Itachi God will run him down. And Pashu, meanwhile, oh, wow. falls to Rival. Itachi, Rival yeah. just cleaning up here with 80 stolen damage. The Rays are going unchecked. They lose a the Sand King, but they get two supports and a core in exchange. I'm not one for calling out players for their mistakes too much, but honestly, I think this is all Pashu's doing. Yeah. Twice now, he's missed an opportunity to defensively disrupt a hero. We talked about how lacklustre the Shadow Demon could be as a pick. He's not even performing to the, to, to the minimal of his abilities here. Yes. This, is, this is some terrible play coming out from And they're going to get a tier 1 on the back of this. Pashu TP'd in, didn't use the defensive disruption. Uh, it might have bought the lifestealer some time. I'm not saying it could have saved him, but he didn't even bother trying. Itachi also missed a pretty much straightforward crush on the Underlord over there. And because of that, Khan's got out alive as well. Mm -hmm. Zark is doing what he can to take down this tier 1 at mid, but Mamasita and Disruption are in the vicinity. If they want to jump in, they most certainly could. Now he's going to form illusions. He's going to offensively use that disruption to send them on the tower. Corrosive Breath does apply they to illusions. They do not have the glyph, they go in either way. Rivals here, rivals not yet complete with the Dragon Lance, but the coil it catches free. A quick repel on the Zark allows him to man up and do some serious damage to rival. Itachi God runs in, gets glimpsed back, disruption with the Butter Strike. The heals are there from Red, but Red is low on mana and Itachi God is low on life. Pashu with a good defensive disruption, but that was just set up for a plasma field. Rival is unstoppable. They're trying their best with the repel, with the purification, but it's still not enough to keep the Slada alive. Sheridals are just crushing marksmen here in this middle lane. Everywhere they go and they take a fight, Sheridals are coming out on top time and again. Yep. What's worse is Rival, a hero that's not meant to get this much net worth this early on, is getting huge. Yeah. By himself, Razor's not the fastest farmer. He's, he's meant to fight and he's fighting often. It's working for them. Now, mm -hmm. this smoke was spotted out by an Observer Watch, so Sheridals are probably not going to be able to find anything off of it. Zark's playing a fair bit confidently, though. However, he's close to his shrine, so he shouldn't be too worried. Mm -hmm. He is close to his shrine, but for all intents and purposes, their defense can only consist of four because the life stealers TP top, red TPs to the mid lane. Time to run down Mama Sita here, who's just baiting out the crush. Opa, yes, TP then could look for a glimpse. Has his level six as well, so this could turn poorly for the marksman. Red just running in with the repel. Mama Sita with the corrosive haze upon him. Heck, Zark is here as well. Wild Wind walked out a bit too much here. Rival's gonna get the tower on the bottom lane, or rather, Khans is gonna get the tower. Now they can TP back to defend as well. Yeah, they have the Dark Rift on the Underlord. They could TP back to this mid lane. Disruption is awfully close <coughs> to his Blink Dagger as well. This is gonna get harder and harder for a marksman to deal with. Yeah. Look at Rival, man. Balls to the wall. He just walks up by himself. He's got no backup here. And they're scared to take him on because they have no vision. Yeah, clearly of the two foes, uh, disruption on the Sand King has been more effective. Um, Itachi God did try, they got first blood, but they haven't done too much in terms of trying to shut down this razor. 13 minutes in, the net worth lead in favour of the Sheridals. We aren't really sure if the marksman did intend to push with this lineup. I'm mighty confused. But yeah, they're just playing reactive Dota. They've got eyes on Khans on the bottom lane, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to make a play. I mean, Zark is in the vicinity, but his armlet isn't even complete. His blink tag goes a long way off. If at all, that's what he's going to go for. <coughs> that middle tier one, it has taken a bit of a beating, so perhaps we're going to see Sheridals group up and take it. Yeah, Mage, uh, he's given up the idea of a catch-up Midas. He seems to be building into an armlet. Let's see if he's going to get it at Red. a good enough time. Red is going to TP out. Peter Malice won proc and Red is out of them. Yeah, I mean, he gave up about 89 damage to Rival on that Razor. So, Rival's going to be able to farm this lane a little more efficiently before possibly moving back towards mid, where Opa and Mamasita are trying desperately to take down that tier 1. Disruption is going to have his Blink Dagger in a minute. Things aren't looking too good uh, for the marksman here. Yeah. Interestingly, Zark skewed up the Shadow Blade and not a Blink Dagger for himself. Possible not Silver Edge for the Underlord? Of, yeah, I mean, the Silver Edge is nice, but I think you're going to need the Blink Dagger to start the fight here. So how's Slada's progress looking? Yeah, Slada's a long way off from it. Yeah. Your Infest Bomb's not going to be an option until you get that Blink Dagger on any of your heroes. Both teams, uh, waiting. Uh, for the other to slip up here. Yeah. Mama Sita's got the veil. 
you know, the problem I foresee for the Chedils is as this game progresses, you're going to have magic immunity on two of the physical DPS cores on the side of Mama Sita, right? Sita, I'm not sure what that was. He goes in with the orb, there's the disruption, keeping the Sand King busy. And Zark with the repel will just run down Mama Sita. Disruption, corrosive haze upon him. But there's the Dark Rift. The Uber brings in the party and the Pit of Malice will ensure that Rival sees a bit of damage. They are trying to run down the Slara who gets his crush before he escapes. Opa looking for that glimpse, not really sure who he used it on earlier. But they lose the puck, they lose the Sand King. And they don't get, get too much done. They get nothing for it actually. No one ends up dying on the side of Marksman. They get two crucial kills. Puck even expended the Dream Coil and Zark still has the Corrosive Breath to work within that Elder Dragon form as he repels this push. They're not going to get this tier 1 tower. Pashu's in the vicinity for the defensive layer as well. And so, Marksman are right back Mama in. Sita had a Veil and no Blink and obbed in right next to the uh, next to the Dragon Knight just to get off his orb and his Veiling Rift. And then Red was waiting. The Purification, immediate defensive disruption. And uh, yeah, the puck just ended up falling over there. I'm not sure what that was by Mama Red Sita. actually walked into them and got a double kill in that fight. So he walks up to Mama Sita, uses the purification, gets a kill, turns around, sees disruption scurrying about with his tail wagging, runs up to him, purification, double kill. And then he walks out scot free. Mm -hmm. Major shown himself in this top lane though. This... But the scan tagged them. He knows what's going on. He but needs he's still to be farming right away. Now. Disruption oh, no. goes in. Static Storm, how are you going to infest out of that? I mean, Rival's here as well. It's another kill for Rival. He's wicked sick on the Razor. Mage, come on. I mean, he knew they were there. He popped the scan. That was immediate. That was immediately his cue to pop Rage and TP out. He was hoping to ray, uh, infest out, but Disruption did have that Blink Dagger. From, yeah, he had his Blink Dagger and Opa was quick to follow with the Static Storm. And this is going to be a push coming out from the Sheridan. Another Tier 2 Tower falling, uh, the first Tier 2 Tower falling on the side of the Marksman while they seem to be looking for a trade themselves. And they're going to form Dragonite Illusions as well, which are going to help to take this tower down. Underlord should be here holding off this push. Heck, the whole of, the entirety of Shadows is steeping to this bottom lane. The question is, can they catch anyone? Rival just cutting them across with the Plasma Field. He's got vision on both of them, tries to steal damage from Pashu. Pashu just steeping out in the trees, gets glimpsed, gets coiled, and he's most certainly dead. Rival moves on to Zark. Where is disruption on that sand kick? He's helping bring down the Shadow Demon. So they hold on to their tier 2, they get a tier 2 themselves and they find a kill on the Shadow Demon. Not too bad. I like the Helm pick up from Khans by the way. It's gonna augment the Razor's damage output and survivability. Giving him some attack speed is always a welcome sight here. Yeah. <clears throat> so they defend their tier 2, they get the Shadow Demon kill. And and still, ex I mean, they're still holding on to a lead in terms of net worth, and now they're actually looking for more. They have vision of the Dragon Knight. Disruptor doesn't have his Dyer's Static Storm, but no, Zark is out of there. Hmm. What's Rival going to go for Dyer's next? He's got the tower. entire Hurricane Pike queued up. It's going to give him a bit more mobility, some much needed mobility rather, versus the Life Sealer. Dragon Knight, meanwhile. His shadow, his shadow Blade is still coming online. He's picked up the Shadow Amulet to start with. Mm -hmm. Shadow is just pushing now. I mean, they have a feeling that they're working with some sort of a lead. They've got the Helm on the Dominator on Khans. He's getting closer and closer to his mech. Heck, he's got his mech complete. Needs to just call it out. Glyph comes out from the side of the Marksman. They're not looking for a fight just yet. They're hoping for Zark to complete that Shadow Blade. Shadows might be ready to push, but coincidentally, they picked up the dagger on the Slara. So. Okay, so Shadows have, have tried to move on to Mage. Finally, just Rage. Pops his Rage and just TPs out of there. Okay, so Even they. Khans comes in with the Dark Rift. They by get the, way. the tier 2, though. It's still a win for them. Yeah, not just that, they've even given momentum to the other side of the map, which means that if they truly wanted to, they could consider Roshan. However, they don't have the damage for it, so... This is one of those games where, as Sheridils, you consider sieging high ground in without the Aegis. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a really tall order to go into the Rosh Pit and bring down Roshan one hit at a time. Opa. He's just sitting with brown boots so far, no arcane boots even to show for it. But he has picked up the tome, he's picked up some wards as well. He's picking up the utility items, but I really feel like he should be spending all of his money ASAP. Watch yeah. for the infest movement though. We're seeing a smoke coming out with uh, Itachi, Itachi Red and Pashu. Okay, Itachi's picked up his blink. 
Now, the Shedils did sense that this could be happening, but they walk into the scan area just as the scan times out. Khans is on the back, he's got the mech complete, he's the one going to be breaking the smoke and this could go horribly wrong. Instead, they've jumped straight on top of Rival, the Pit of Malice is there, the Static Thumb controls right on the Omni Knight and the Epicenter right on top, they've eliminated the Slaughter, Rival still stands, the Guardian Angel pop, but is it enough? Rival is just running down Mage, away from his team and brings him down, while meanwhile Mama Sita has got a coil on the tree, the Purification is there, but it's still not enough, Khan scores a double with the Firestorm, Zuck will fall, after getting a double kill, but at the end of it all, Sherdils bring down five and they're marching through the mid lane. It's a team wipe and Sherdils are going to get a tower on the back of this. That was such a clutch Static Storm coming out from Opa. Yeah. He controlled Red, ensuring that for a majority of the fight, the Omni Knight couldn't do anything. The Epicenter followed up perfectly from Disruption. And not just that, you had a three-man coil from Mama Sita at the tail end yeah. of things to hold them in position as Rival came back with stolen damage, wrapping all the way around and beating up on them. It was fortunate that the Dragonite got the kill on the Razor, but it's not fortunate enough because, I mean, even Khans packs a punch right now with the Atrophora. 185 additional damage. There we go. Mama Sita jumps in, the Burr Strike is there and Opa. It's actually got his going in. I'm deleted. not sure this... Okay, they've got the defensive dark rift. Uh, Mage comes in, pops the rage, moves on to Disruption. And there's a Siege Wagon as well, so yeah. the tier 3 is gonna go down here. Yeah, Siege Wagon does its bit. Mage even attempting to quickly infest in and out of it, but... Was a second too late. Alright, so 22 minutes in, the shrines are now exposed and Khans has managed to pick up his entire greaves as well. Yeah. This gets immensely difficult now for Mage and the boys. Mage finally picks up his Desolator. So they've got some way to rip straight through that... Uh... Oh, Red. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He's got the Repel. He's got the Purification as well. Really he's right. going to TP. And there's nothing they can do. But... Uh... Are we going to see Sherdils try and take the Shrines right away though? They you, should. You think Shrines rush on or...? I think you take the Shrines and then just commandeer the other side of the map. I mean, we've seen this mistake being made in okay. the past. Akramax made this same mistake just yesterday versus the Yakshas. So they are, to some extent, commandeering the other side of the map. But I'm not sure if the plan is to go high ground just yet. It is. It, I mean, even if they don't go high ground, they've just got to make sure that they're fighting and farming beyond the river. Okay. As long as they're on this side of the map, it means that they will have the economic advantage, they'll get more resources than their opponents, and they'll be able to push high ground eventually. All they've got to do is find a pick-off somewhere on this side of the river, and then move on to the high ground when the creeps are pushing in. Okay. They've already taken down one shrine as well. You can see the net worth graph swinging wildly in favour of Sherdils. 11,000 on the puck, 11,000 on the razor, and about 9,000 on the underlord. Everyone is getting money here. And Rival's almost got himself a Manta style as well. That will be another tool that will help them to push. This is probably a game for an Aghanim Scepter on the Razor though. Mm -hmm. You want to have a way to take down those buildings. The Aghanims does just that. Marksman backs up against the wall. Mama Sita isn't with his team though. Little uh, far away. Pashu. He's trying to scout out the rush pit. Mama Sita did see that shadow poison, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, they've uh, got reasonably deep vision. They are sort of forcing the marksmen into their half of the map. Disruption. He's got himself a smoke of deceit upon him as well. Yeah. And, I mean, rightfully so, they've kept the creep wave pushed out beyond the river and they're constantly applying pressure. But they kind of seem to be hesitating now. Shadows, they want to go Roshan, but I'm not sure if they have enough to bring down Rosh quickly. I think taking that shrine first is somewhat crucial. I also think, I mean, look, they've got a sentry nearby, but look at this. The shrine just means that Red as well as Zark are going to TP in. This Radiant Observer is going to catch a majority of this. This is Red, though, with the Greaves upon him. Khans. Immediately dark rips to the top lane. <laughs> okay. Let Mama That's see us it. What That's a sick play from it. Khans and the boys. Sick play. Bait and switch. And now they're up taking a tier 3. And now they're going to be coming from behind them. So Rival just... was left behind though and a ward spotted him. Okay. So you either go for Rival or you defend your tier 3. What are you going to do? <laughs> Khans is TP'd back. 
Oh man, this is beautiful. This is hilarious. This is beautiful. They've taken some, they've done some chip damage on the tier 3 and now they're going to bail as well with Mama Sita. This is risky though. Actually God has a blink. Blink Mama for Sita the way. moving into the fountain. And now they're coming back to Roshan. What a sick play from Shadils. Fantastic stuff. And now they come back and take Roshan <laughs> as well. <laughs> I, I mean, don't know who called the shots there, but that was genius. It's it's a little bit like the Indian team in Lagan when they play cricket for the first time. That it's eleven players running after one ball here, yeah. <laughs> and and the Shadils have made the marksman look oh, like Baba peasants. Was a glimpse. Anyway, rival has got ages. Uh, Baba Sita has got an arcane rune. The top tier three has taken some damage. It's up to the marksman to somehow hold on to the high ground here. Yeah. Can they though? I mean, that's a Manta style complete on an Aegis Razor with the Hurricane Pike. Disruption's got a blink and a force, so the epicenter is almost guaranteed to connect this game. And Mama Sita is pretty much stacked as well. Yeah, and Mama Sita is pushing up the top lane, which is the smart thing to the do. The only here. way that they come back is if Itachi God gets like a three hero crush or something to start the fight. And then you've got a Life Sealer infested in there who jumps in and takes down the Puck or the Razor first. Maybe. Trying to give momentum to the bottom side of the map. Uh, Itachi got caught in the root. Immediate repel thrown upon the Slada. Rival just shrugs off the Kurose ways with his Mantis type. He's focusing the barracks. They've got ages and why not? Look at what Rival's done though. He sent one of his illusions to auto attack Itachi got, thus disabling oh, his blink. Disruption goes man. in. Pashu eliminated the coil upon red controlling his movements. Rival, I have the storm trying to run in. Itachi got, he's got the crush. The static storm doesn't clip on anyone. May trying to bring down disruption here. But the pit of malice awaits him. He blocks just at the end of his rage. And disruption turns around with a butter strike. All this time, Rival still alive, still hasn't lost the ages, and has a fair amount of stolen damage. They get the barracks, they could move top. Itachi got with the crush, with the purification, trying to bring down Rival. They'll get the ages, what? but they might play with the Slara's life here. Mama Sita, all forward. Is he going to commit? No, he's not going to. Zark all by himself, 105 damage stolen from him. The Dragon Knight hits for nothing and Rival hits like a truck. He's moved towards the top lane. Bit of malice upon the Dragon Knight. Once again, damage being stolen. Pashu's back up. Disruption though with the epicenter right on top of the Shadow Demon. The Greaves isn't enough and Rival now, he's just manning up versus the Dragon Knight. The Coil finally times out. Zark, he's got that repel, but what can he do with it? His tier 3 is falling. He's trying to catch them on the retreat and now is their best chance. But the Uber's been prepped. The Uber's ready and they're all gonna get the hell out of there. Beautifully done by the Sherdils. Another quick clean escape coming out by the Sherdils. They end up expanding the ages, but they get a lane of barracks to show for it. And well they did lose they didn't lose any heroes actually. They only lost, they the, lost ages the ages in that entire fight. They it, got they got the Shadow Demon twice, if I'm not mistaken. They got the Life Stealer once. Yeah, my fight recap timed out, so I really didn't catch what happened there. But good stuff coming out from the Sherdils. We have seen that every now and then this team shows glimpses of being the best when it comes to taking high ground. Not like this though, Disruption. In fact, he could turn this around. Maybe it's like this God. after all. Dream Turned call? Run away. No Dream Call available, so he chooses not to go for that. They do have a glimpse. They've caught someone. Oh, Who is it? The, the Disruption, it's, it's not going to save you from the glimpse. They've caught Red oh, in man, the Static Storm. Bad. How does he heal himself? He did have the Purification, but he does end up going down. That could be a buyback on the Omni Knight. And the Marksman, they've been taken to school with this game. Yep, that was painful to watch. Red's probably going to have to commit a buyback for this because we're seeing the lines being drawn. They want to push the bottom lane immediately. Not, yeah, I mean, they have to because the top lane's already pushed out by Zark and this is the only opportunity they're going to get. But Marksman have a decent ward behind, so that's going to give them a bit of a vision advantage going into this next fight. Dragon Knight's also finished up a BKB for this fight, so this could be the turnaround moment for them. But it's all going to rely on a big crush from Itachi God. They've got to eliminate Rival. Rival. Yes. A two-man crush, there's the follow-up. Itachi got slowed, controlled, brought down. Mage pops out, he's moving on to Khans. Khans four staffed away. Rival being controlled with the Dragon Tail. Mage trying to pound away on the Razor, whose static link has been broken, but the four staffs are there. The BKB is being wasted here on Zark. He's trying to chase a Disruptor, but all of the Sheridans have gone in, taken a Tier 3 and come out. Buyback on the Omni Knight as well, and a BKB, like you said. Not to mention the Elder Dragon form. They literally just have to wait for it to time out and then go in and end this game. But it looks like they're going to go top instead and push out the other side of the map. Yeah, they've got a shrine. I mean, Rival can go back, tag the shrine. Khans has made a base trip. He's coming back with some item. I'm not sure what. 
Sankyung's got a good 4,000 gold and that's a Lotus Orb pretty much complete for him as well. Mm -hmm. You got a Lotus Orb complete on the Sand King. I think Hans has gone for the Crimson Guardian or a Vanguard. I'm not really sure. Hans, yeah, Hans is the yeah, completed Crimson, Crimson Guard. Guard. So all that damage coming out from the Lifestealer pretty much means nothing. The Corrosive Ace is nice, but the Crimson Guard counts. You know, we've seen Shadows evolve as this game has progressed and now they've reached their final form, man. Yeah, this they is their final form. They know how to hit high ground, they know how to itemize to push. They've learned from their mistakes as well as their opponent's mistakes and man, they are forced, they're a force to be reckoned with. If, if at all they do end up winning this game, which is very likely at the moment, Yakshas should be worried. Because this, this is a new and improved Shadows. They'll start the fight off by bringing down Pashu. That's one layer of defense eliminated. And here we go. The push has commenced. Is that a Radiant Observer? I'm not sure. But anyhow, they're pushing. They're taking down the range barracks. How do the marksmen want to deal with this? A Crimson Guard upon the Razor. Zark trying to walk in. Damage stolen. Walks right back. On the back lines though, Itachi Guard has come in with Mage inside. He gets the crush, might pay with his life and Mage pops the rage, runs away. Zark's doing nothing by the way. He's lost about 224 and damage. I mean, Greaves Purification, it's cute. It forces out a BKB, forces out a look Guardian Angel. Khan's in, but look at Khan's, he's <laughs> up. Let's not waste time with this Dragon Knight. We've come here for the objectives. Objectives win games. And they are going to get another lane of battles. Beautiful stuff, man. This is how you use the Underlord to perfection. Bait and switch Dota at his finest. Zark TP's in. He's uh, got the Elder Dragon form. He's trying to do his best. Demonic Purge, excuse me. It's the epicenter from Disruption which brings down Zark. Zark buys back. Rabel just running down Pashu, brings him down as well. Right the now. Static Storm almost perfect, but a second too late. And Mage might fall as well. The Rage, not enough. Itachi got with the crush. And the least he can do is bring down Opa, who's got the Lotus Orb upon him, who draws the kinetic field on the ground, but finally falls to the Slada. Meanwhile, GG, though. Red Control brought down. Shadows have done it. They've played some phenomenal. Dota here today and I for one Cloudex am looking forward to this final like all hell. Honestly, Shadels have shown us an all-new side of them here. They've wiped the floor with Marksman. No questions about who was the superior team here.